Hello all, in this short video we will be covering how to use HyperStudy to do, perform material calibration specifically for an elastoplastic material. We have measured test data and we have our simulation model and they're not maybe just quite lining up so we want to go ahead and tune that uh, material properties. Specifically we have our uh, model here, kind of a quarter symmetry of our test coupon and we've applied some um, enforced velocity to stretch it and where we're going to be tuning the Young's modulus the hardening parameter hardening exponent and the maximum stress uh, for this material so let's go ahead and look at how we might do that in hyperstudy I'm gonna go ahead and start a new study and navigate over to where my files are stored um, so go to downloads, local files, and this will be my working directory. Click OK, and I'm going to go ahead and add a model. In this case, it's going to be a parameterized model, as I want to read in the parameters from my Radius model itself. It's already going to recognize that there's maybe no parameters defined yet, so I'll go ahead and specify those. Go ahead and search for our material. Uh, in this case, we're simply doing um, the Young's modulus. We could do a variety of additional parameters if we really wanted to, um, not just a you know single material card. So here we'll do the Young's modulus, and we just kind of basically take a little time to set up our model. And it's always good to to pick values that are reasonable. Uh, if you know you have an aluminum alloy, it's good to specify a reasonable upper and lower bound. You, you don't want to necessarily specify zero and you know a billion or something. So um, again, you could use percentages or set values. Uh, that'll be important uh, when performing the DOE or optimization. All right, so let's move on to our. All right, maybe this is our plastic yield. So I'm just going to put some values in here. Then we'll do our hardening coefficient. And just a couple more to do. Uh, this will be our hardening exponent. Two ninety. All right. So once we've set that up. Uh, we've got all of our variables defined. I'll go and click OK, and uh, we'll import those variables. Just make sure that that's working correctly. All right, good. We could always modify our bounds from here. Let me go back to my model, and I have a couple things I want to do. Uh, being that it's a Radios model, I want to go ahead and add the engine file. Uh, so that'll be here, and we'll go ahead and copy that over to our run directory. And last but not least, we want to go ahead and add in a solver argument um, to kind of help our jobs run a little bit faster. So this is really up to your uh, workstation. So I'll do maybe four cores per iteration. And we are ready to go on to uh, do our test. So this will be our baseline run just to make sure our model is working correctly uh, with hyperstudy just need to do one of these and it'll be used in uh, future uh, DOEs analyses uh, other types of studies all right next we'll go into defining our our resources so in this example I'm going to define uh, I think seven let's see here seven uh, data sources, so I'll just go ahead and add those in here. Uh, again, I might be doing some uh, 
items that you know you might not need for your specific setup but just kind of take it as these these might are some options you might want to use so experimental strain experimental stress and we could always change the variable names if we wanted to and we'll do simulation displacement uh, simulation uh, force this will be our calculated stress uh, maybe I'll do strain just kind of keep it organized here and we'll do our calc stress and uh, the item of interest is really that area under those curves uh, really the difference between uh, our experimental and simulation uh, now we'll go ahead and work walk through kind of the tool setup uh, so our experimental strain and stress comes from a text file so it could be a space or tab or CSV delimited uh, so that will be again our file source file source uh, our simulation we'll do read simulation for our calculated sprain, we're going to do a templex. So we're going to input some templex uh, calculations. And for the file source, we have area, which is a kind of a unique uh, tool for this application. So let's go ahead and load in our file source. Again, that's our experimental data. And it has a single block for this set of data. Uh, column one is going to be our strain. Column two would be our stress. So. Let's do this one more time. And this will be column two. So you see our nice stress curve. Uh, next will be our simulation displacement. So we want to read in um, our results. Uh, just kind of based on the outputs that I used, um, I'm going to use the T01 file. This is great for hypergraph, for example. Uh, we also do have the H3D file if you want to read in your uh, directly your stress and your strain um, as well. Um, so once we read that in, uh, for this, we're going to look at our node. Again, these are related to our output requests, and it'll be displacement x. So that looks good. Uh, next, we'll do our simulation force. Let's go ahead and navigate once more. T01 file. This time, we'll do our section. Um, basically, we're going to be doing a, a calculation uh, to calculate those uh, strains and stresses. Uh, this will be the result of tangent force at a given section. Um, for uh, the calculated strain, um, that's simply going to be one of our design variables uh, divided by the length of the neck of the coupon. So here we have uh, DS3. We're going to divide by the length of the neck, which is 75. I think in this case it might be millimeters. And then again, we'll do this. So this will be DS4 divided by that area of that cross section we're pulling the force from uh, to get our stress. And let's go ahead and plug in our calculated and experimental data and get a visualization of our plots. So we'll do calc strain, calc stress. Um, so yeah, here you can see we have our, you know, kind of a reference curve, which is our test data, and then we have our simulation. So we're going to look to minimize um, the maximum difference between these two. So we can also visualize simply the, the difference between them. Um, something else I could have done is I also, you know, since it's linear, I could have uh, scaled the simulation values uh, from here by 75, divide by 75, you know, divide by 12 type of a thing. So that was kind of an extra step, but I just wanted to make note um, that you can do your, your own math functions within HyperStudy. Uh, let's go back to our output resources, and we're going to add an output, and we'll just call this area. Uh, and then that was uh, design variable 7. So we're going to look for the maximum of design variable 7. And it's this that we're going to look to uh, minimize actually we want to get that as small as possible and once we evaluate that we can see that we have our values registered and then also here we have our values so everything looks everything looks good uh, from here we, there's a, diff, a few different things we could do um, I could do a DOE uh, do some uh, variable sensitivity analysis some basically variable screening uh, or I could just directly go to an optimization. So 
Um, I'm going to show how to do the optimization setup real quick uh, since we're kind of talking about optimizing a material card. And we could just skip the definition. Um, it's already been uh, pulled in. So if we go to, um, yeah, our study. So it's already pulling this in from our model. Uh, so if we go to define outputs, you can see everything's brought over to this optimization study. For the optimization, we're going to do a global response search. Uh, this is a great general approach for best accuracy. Obviously, it's going to be a little more expensive, but it's going to observe, you know, look at the model more globally. And we have a few options here we can also kind of specify. So I'd recommend you kind of look into the, you know, documentation if you want to kind of dive into some of the details here. Um, if we did have some previous studies, you know, optimization, uh, maybe this is optimization 10, I had optimization 1, anyways, um, or DOEs, you can include that here. So if you had a DOE with 12 different runs, you could always add that into the optimization. Help save you a little bit of time. Click apply, and specifications are good to go. Uh, now it's on to evaluating. So we'll go ahead and click evaluate tasks, and it's going to chunk through uh, two iterations at a time, you know, four cores a piece, and we'll get like a nice little update here at the bottom corner um, as it progresses. So uh, something else you might note. Uh, possibly could happen is if there's an error with any of the parameters that uh, during an iteration maybe they don't make sense for the simulation you might get an error uh, in a in a job run so just kind of keep that in mind uh, you might want to look into those those values so here in the evaluation data it's kind of nice to kind of observe the progress of um, your analysis if for some reason you know you see that um, the area is progressively decreasing, that's great, you know, or your objective in general. Uh, so you can monitor the, the jobs as they go along. And then they are being, you know, added to your working directory as you go, as your different runs. So I'll go ahead and pause it for a second right here. I'm going to let the runs finish and I will um, continue my video. All right, so our study... Uh, optimization has gone through its 50 iterations, about five minutes, not, not too bad here. Uh, something else that I forgot to mention that you could do while it's progressing through its iteration is you can actually go to the iteration plot as well and look at uh, your goal and see how you know each uh, iteration, so these two kind of analyses at a given iteration are uh, kind of progressing along. So you can kind of see it's uh, converging here. So let's go ahead and move on to our post-processing tab and go to our summary and simply we could right click and say sort down on the condition and uh, we have a variety of you know quote unquote feasible uh, optimizations and it's going to give you it's going to highlight the optimal one in green and these will be your input parameters, uh, parameters for your material card uh, iteration 41. If we go over to our area uh, tab which can be activated um, through these kind of additional tabs Go to our area tab and we go to our summary. Um, excuse me, go to our summary and we go scroll down to 41. We can actually see you know, how well uh, those tuned material parameters now align with the test data. And with that, if we want to know, you know, extract those uh, values, we can go to show and explore, run 41, and here we have our uh, rad file with our updated parameters. So you could you know, edit this text file and then import it into your model or simply use this um, if, if you wanted to use this as one of your reference models. So that is the little tidbit, little tips and tricks I had here with HyperStudy. I hope you found it valuable and thank you for your time.